morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and a detailed weather forecast coming at you your way on the 14th of October 2025. We've got lots to talk about today. Thunderstorms forecast through parts of central and northern Queensland. We've got a severe thunderstorm outbreak now in the cards from Friday in New South Wales and on Saturday through parts of southeast Queensland and just a whole swathe of thunderstorms expected to extend across Queensland, the Northern Territory and Western Australia as the tropical wet season begins to really build into overdrive. All the details on these storms plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. If you are brand new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning with a look at the thunderstorms that are going to develop into central northern Queensland today. So the locations to watch north of Longreach around Huendon and then across towards Mount Isa. Big outback thunderstorms forecast in the Gulf country of Queensland and plenty of pulse thunderstorms expected through parts of central northern Queensland. They're already beginning to fire up uh, this morning. I can't even believe I'm saying that, but earlier this morning we were seeing some thunderstorm activity around Maxwellton and New McKinley. There is a little bit of convection now beginning to build towards the northwest of Longreach reach and I'm expecting that convection to begin to build into the next couple of hours and you can actually see a weak thunderstorm developing just southwest of Winton in North Queensland. Temperatures are really beginning to get up there, 30 degrees already at 8 o'clock in the morning and it's only going to get warmer through this part of Queensland today. There's going to be a lot of places that reach high 30s even into the early 40s so another hot day expected out there and with plenty of humidity in the atmosphere it's going to be a cracker day for thunderstorms. Even across towards the North Queensland coastline, Charters Towers looking at a top of 35 and then down to Claremont Emerald and Dingo, all tops between 34 to 36. Moranbar could get a little bit warmer up around 35 or 36 here outside of Mackay. Temperatures will be a little bit milder along the coastline, but with these temperatures on the forecast, it clearly means some big convective activity is going to build, uh, especially uh, after about midday onwards, but particularly between about 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon out to about 6 or 7 o'clock this evening. We're expecting these thunderstorms to be big, powerful and strong. Very potent thunderstorms into outback northwestern Queensland and some great pulse thunderstorm activity through parts of north central Queensland, extending south to Charleville, where storms will be a little bit patchier and a few, a lot fewer and further between, but we're still expecting thunderstorms to extend down west of Charleville, Augathella and Tambo, and a few thunderstorms also possible down around the Rolleston and the Injun area as well. These thunderstorms not likely to be very strong or last very long at all, but a few thunderstorms possible into the late afternoon hours down there. But definitely the places to watch, Jericho, Munnaburra, Winton, Huendon, Maxwellton, McKinley, Cloncurry, Mount Isa, even Claremont, Moranbar, Glendon and Charters Towers to an extent expecting good and potent thunderstorm activity today. Locations such as Emerald, Augathella, Injun, Charleville, Roma, Adavale, Yarraka, and then out towards Bullia and Bedori will be more of those fringe kind of locations for these thunderstorms. They've still got a chance of seeing thunderstorms today, but they're very much on the fringes of what thunderstorms are going to see. The weaker thunderstorms will make it out to those locations, but very widespread and extensive storm activity forecast through central and northern Queensland today. These thunderstorms will be slow moving, so if you do see rain, uh, thunderstorm blow up in your location, you can expect a pretty significant amount of rainfall, but that's pretty much only if these thunderstorms do impact your location. Unfortunately, the places closer to the coastline, such as Townsville, Mackay, even Rockhampton, and down into the Capricorn coastline, which are in some pretty desperate need for rainfall at this point in time, they're not going to see these thunderstorms of rainfall very unlikely in those locations. These are high convective available potential energy environments these thunderstorms are going to find themselves in, particularly through northern Queensland into the Gulf Country and through uh, outback northwestern Queensland. We've got these values here well above 1700 and pushing closer to about three or 4,000 closer to the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria coastline. So propped up by those extreme instability values, we're going to see some pretty big convective blow-ups. It's really going to be an interesting day, that's for sure. Definitely nothing in the way of wild severe thunderstorm activity is expected, particularly into northwestern Queensland. These thunderstorms are more sort of going to be the damaging wind type thunderstorms with a couple of big raindrops in them. We could see some large hailstones develop into central northern Queensland, particularly around Jericho, Tambo and Longreach, but it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing anything too wild or too crazy in the way of uh, supercellular activity that will bring some major severe thunderstorm ramifications through these parts of Queensland. Interestingly, the day for really severe thunderstorms appears to be tomorrow in a more concentrated area through parts of south central Queensland, particularly between Charleville across to Roma and up towards Rolleston and across towards Tambo. Some strong thunderstorms expected in this vicinity here and also some really strong thunderstorm activity possible around Yarraka, Winton, Aramanga, Quilpie and Adavale. We'll be seeing some very strong thunderstorms possible tomorrow afternoon and evening. Again, propped up by some pretty significant convective available potential energy values, particularly earlier on in the day and the further out towards the west you go, these values start approaching 2,000. We've also got some really good humidity values and some temperature values moving into this part of Queensland through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon. Another very warm day expected, and it looks like it's going to be a very good environment for severe thunderstorms through tomorrow afternoon and evening. Yeah, have a look at this sounding here. This is definitely one of the better soundings that we'll see at this time of year through Queensland, and this is out around Quilpie. Uh, you've got this dry slot in 
in the mid levels here, very moist air down into the lower levels and some good moisture in the upper levels in a highly wind sheared environment. This is a very good setup for severe thunderstorm activity. And tomorrow we're expecting a crack a day of large hailstones, heavy rainfall, damaging winds <laughs> and supercellular thunderstorms. So definitely tomorrow a day to watch and, and that big Wednesday out into central parts of Queensland. Thursday will bring similar uh, or a similar setup, but slightly weaker thunderstorms expected in a very similar setup of Queensland, just for a smaller area between Charleville or Cathela and then across towards Injun and Roma and some strong thunderstorms possible down to the Queensland, New South Wales border and then over the border down to Woolgate, Lightning Ridge, Moree and Narrabri as well. Some thunderstorms could be quite strong there. Friday will bring the thunderstorm risk into New South Wales. I'll touch on that in just a few minutes because that deserves a separate part of the video to itself. Later Friday night, we may see some strong thunderstorm activity in towards the northeast of New South Wales. We could be talking about some heavy rainfall or large hailstone threats between eight o'clock in the evening and about midnight. And these thunderstorms could in the very early morning hours of Saturday make it across the border in towards southeast Queensland, particularly north of uh, Stanthorpe and Gundawindi and then out towards Toowoomba and Warwick, but also in towards the Gold Coast and maybe even the Brisbane metro area. Chances are slim, but they are there. Saturday will bring a widespread thunderstorm outbreak to southeast Queensland. The setup right now is a little bit hit or miss. We don't really have those high convective available potential energy values that we would like to see at this time of the year. These values are sitting at about 1,400. In fact, their places, they're down to about 1,000. So it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing anything too crazy on the instability side of things, but a line of thunderstorms is possible later in the afternoon and the evening, and it will be enough for severe thunderstorms. There is definitely a favorable enough environment here for a few severe thunderstorms to develop, and particularly towards the northwest of Brisbane, we do have that big dry slot in the atmosphere once again in what looks to be a reasonably sheared environment. So Saturday will be another day to watch through southeast Queensland. Uh, if I had to put a comparison towards it, conditions look okay, uh, and they're probably similar to what we saw uh, last weekend or on Sunday just gone, just slightly more hostile to thunderstorms. We're not expecting the widespread potent severe thunderstorms that we saw in towards the Kingaroo and the Kilcoy area. It will be more of a widespread, more of a rainy kind of uh, thunderstorm uh, day, but again, we're going to have to wait at least another day or two to really see what the forecast evolves into. Saturday takes thunderstorms out of southeast Queensland, and it actually takes thunderstorms out of southeast Queensland for a couple of days. You get a bit of a breathing space there. Tuesday, we'll see some thunderstorms into parts of south central Queensland. Wednesday, could see a return to uh, thunderstorm conditions uh, into parts of southeast Queensland, but especially over the border and towards northeast New South Wales. But Friday, the 24th of October, is a day that I've had my eye on for a little bit now. For the last couple of days, we could see some thunderstorm activity in towards the southeast corner of Queensland and especially into parts of the south and the North Burnett Forecast District along the Fraser Coast and into the Capricorna coastline as well. This is an interesting day to watch. Again, it looks like we've got some pretty high convective available potential energy values and this looks like it could be a potent day for severe thunderstorm activity through parts of southeastern and central Queensland. Definitely Friday the 24th of October, now a day to watch on the long range forecast. And beyond that, it's kind of meaningless looking at thunderstorms because it is just so long range at that point in time. But Friday, as promised, New South Wales looking at a thunderstorm outbreak. I did make a post on it last night, I believe, or this morning. I can't actually remember. That's bad for me over on Facebook. And these thunderstorms here, I did say that there was going to be a reduction in the expansiveness and the severity of these thunderstorms on the forecast models. And we have seen that this morning, although not as big of a reduction as I did expect. So what that means is we've got that SSW event, as we all know, high above Antarctica, filtering down in through the atmosphere here now and that's going to continue to dry things out and particularly over the next couple of weeks through New South Wales and especially the further south you go. So central and northern New South Wales not as uh, heavily impacted by the SSW as what other locations are but you still can see it on the sounding here. We've got that sharp uptick in the temperatures in the upper levels of the atmosphere. It's not much. It does rise about five degrees over the course of about 14 or 1500 metres up here but still that sharp uptick in temperatures is a sign that those temperatures are now beginning to filter down into the uh, middle levels of the atmosphere and that's going to continue to dry things out through New South Wales. So these thunderstorms here, I do actually expect a reduction in how severe they are on the forecast in the next couple of days. But nonetheless, this is a potent setup for thunderstorms and especially through parts of central New South Wales around Mus uh, Musselbrook and then uh, up towards Tamworth, Narrabri, Coonabal, Dubbo, Mudgee, Orange, Bathurst, Lithgow, all these locations through parts of central New South Wales, expecting some solid thunderstorm potential for Friday. A wildcard location is going to be the Hunter region. They get some really gnarly storms at this time of the year and the 
east and we're forecast is calling for a pretty defined outbreak of thunderstorms to move through the Hunter region as well, particularly around about two or three o'clock in the afternoon out to about five or six o'clock in the afternoon. So the Hunter region definitely into a place to watch for earlier Friday afternoon. Some good thunderstorms also forecast right out and towards central New South Wales with some of the most intense lightning that I've actually seen on the forecast models so far this thunderstorm season. So definitely something to watch, that's for sure. Uh, Friday definitely now becomes a solid day for thunderstorm potential. For Sydney, Wollongong and Newcastle, well, Wollongong does have a chance of seeing thunderstorms. It's going to be a pretty slim chance that cool change later on in the day should keep things a little bit more tame down there. Sydney, definitely the western suburbs looking at some widespread thunderstorm potential on Friday afternoon and Newcastle nestled into the Hunter River Valley is definitely expecting some thunderstorm activity and definitely some potent severe thunderstorm activity with the large hailstones, heavy rainfall and damaging winds through the wider Hunter region and also for Newcastle itself on Friday afternoon and evening. It's a one hit wonder this thunderstorm outbreak you can see for the days after not expecting anything too crazy. Thunderstorms do return around the 21st of October and then into the 22nd of October through parts of northeastern New South Wales. That could be another outbreak to watch especially considering uh, the conditions uh, look to be quite healthy around that time as well. However we definitely do start to see the impacts of that SSW event filtering down in the atmosphere. It does become a lot drier in the atmosphere further up and we can also see those temperatures beginning to tick up as well above about 11 or 1200 metres into the atmosphere. So the SSW really looks to be throttling storm activity around this time. But yeah, for sure, over in the eastern states, we have our hands tied with thunderstorm activity. And that also goes for our north. We've got wild thunderstorm activity forecast to continue up across northern Australia through the Northern Territory and Western Australia. And it kicks off a seven day period of some significant thunderstorm activity with today and tomorrow being pretty significant days for thunderstorms. The top end of the Northern Territory, pretty much anywhere north of a line between Broome and Fitzroy crossing out to Tennant Creek and Mount Isa over in Queensland, expecting thunderstorm activity throughout this afternoon and this evening. It's just that usual pulse thunderstorm storm stuff that blows up and then collapses in on itself. Uh, thunderstorms making it as far towards the south as Newman in Western Australia and thunderstorms expected to be quite expansive through the Kimberley region as well. Thunderstorms forecast continue in a very significant outbreak through tomorrow afternoon through Western Australia and they'll also carry over into the Northern Territory. We're expecting widespread thunderstorm activity right down into the south interior of Western Australia and it is going to be a scorcher that's for sure. We're looking at temperatures into the high 30s as far south as the Nullarbor Plain for the first time in 2025 26 summer. These temperatures are going to carry over in towards South Australia on Thursday. We are expecting another scorcher in South Australia on Thursday and you can see temperatures expected to rise well into the 40s through parts of uh, central South Australia and once again thunderstorms expected to blow up through parts of northern Western Australia as well and into the Northern Territory. Thunderstorms become a little bit more tamer on Friday. You can see they're a lot more concentrated into the top end of the Northern Territory in the Kimberley region and it's just widespread thunderstorms and extensive thunderstorms pretty much every single night now for the Kimberley region and that's because those temperatures are now really beginning to rise across northern Australia. I mean, if we have a look at this, the whites on this map here is above 42 degrees, and we're really seeing these temperatures explode into the mid-40s now, and even into the high 40s in some locations, particularly in towards late October, we're looking at temperatures climbing up above 42, 43, even up towards 45 or so into parts of central Australia. Marble Bar already looking at its first 45 degree days towards the end of October. So mid-40 degree days are coming, and those high 40 degree days are not going to be far behind that. So interesting stuff, certainly something to be watching out for onto the longer range modelling. And speaking of the longer range modelling, we do have the Madden Julian Oscillation expected to return to Section 3, which is over in the northwest of WA, by around October 20th to October 25th. And that means surges in moisture are expected from that point onwards. So Madden Julian Oscillation is this big surge of energy that promotes moisture across northwestern WA, and particularly offshore from the Indian Ocean. We're in a very strong negative Indian Ocean dipole as well, which means these thunderstorms and this rainfall that does develop offshore from northwestern WA is going to be significant or more significant than usual. It's going to carry more rainfall and it's going to carry more storm potential. We actually have a low pressure system that's now forecast to occur between the Cocos Keeling Islands and Christmas Island around October 22nd out to about October 25th. This is a very weak signal and it's not expected to develop into a tropical cyclone and it most certainly isn't a threat to the West Australian coastline but it is an interesting feature that we begin to see at this time of the year and that is tropical low pressure systems developing in this part of the West Australian coastline. Uh, I shouldn't really call it the West Australian coastline because it is about 3,000 kilometres offshore, but you know what I'm talking about. This will then lead to a surge in moisture tra uh, tailing off towards Western Australia and then eventually later on into October through South Australia down in towards New South Wales and Victoria. This could promote thunderstorms in towards early November through parts of New South Wales and Victoria, but it's more likely to just provide a couple of showers and storms here and there between October 25th out to about October 28th. And again, the SSW event expected to really throttle the moisture out of these thunderstorms and showers as they make it over in 
towards southeastern Australia. Interesting stuff, and again, it's something to watch a feature to be watching very closely over the next couple of weeks. That's going to do it for today's weather forecast update, though. I do hope you found it enjoyable and informative, and preferably both. And if you have, then please do consider subscribing and leave a like on the video while you're at it as well. Your support lately has been massively appreciated. I could not run the show without you, and I could not run the show without the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and as of course, as always, their names are massively appreciated as well. But that's going to do it for me today. Have a great Tuesday, have a great week, and I'll catch you all in the next storm.